Ethan Frank might be ready to help the Capitals sooner than later. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form, so head on over to YouTube and check it out. My name is Dan Holman. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So, in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about how the Capitals give a new contract to Michael Scarboza and where does he fit in with the Capitals' plans in the future. Then later in the show, we will talk about Ethan Frank, who kind of came out of nowhere but is poised to help the Capitals in the near future. But just to get it going here, we will talk about Alex Ovechkin. And Alex Ovechkin is the top-selling jersey for 22-23. And uh, it shouldn't come as any surprise. But who is number one and number two? I guess that shouldn't come as, as any surprise either. Future Hall of Famers Alex Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby top the NHL in jersey sales during the 22 22- 23 regular season. So the two old guys in the league still are the top sellers in jerseys, which means what? There is still a great interest in Alex Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby. You know, you might have thought to yourself, well, this is a young man's game. This is, you know, kind of a young fan base. Maybe it was a Connor McDavid, or maybe it was one of, you know, a young up and comer uh, that, you know, is just poised to do bigger things. But it wasn't the case. Ovi, your captain. The number one selling jersey in all of the NHL. And I think that's a big thing because the Capitals did not get the season that they were looking for. You might think to yourself that, you know, maybe it's going to be a jersey from one of the players that's playing in the Stanley Cup right now. But as it turns out, everyone, I think there's a consensus out there that we all know that Ovi will be revered one day as the greatest of all time. The greatest goal scorer of all time. We could argue about that he might be the greatest goal scorer of all time right now, just based on a lot of different things, goalie size, uh, the types of sticks, the types of players, the, the height of the player. There's a lot of things to factor in, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about how, you know, it's kind of a good litmus test, a good measuring stick to see how great a player is if people are voluntarily going out and spending their hard-earned money on a player's jersey. This wasn't a fan ballot. This was people spending their hard-earned cash on an Alex Ovechkin jersey and a Sidney Crosby jersey. I think that really speaks well uh, for the Capitals. I think it speaks well of the NHL in general. According to ESPN's Greg Wasinski, Ovechkin was first and Crosby was second. Yeah, deal with that. Sidney Crosby followed by Boston Bruins forward David Pasternak in third. New Jersey Devils forward Jack Hughes. That's what I'm talking about. You would think maybe it would be someone like a Jack Hughes, but people know. When it all comes down to it, it's not a flash in the pan. It is sustainability. And Ovi and Sidney Crosby have stood the test of the times. Uh, Just Ovi's done it a little bit better, I guess. Uh, And in fourth, in Toronto Maple Leafs forward, Austin Matthews in fifth. No real surprises there if you take a look at those all real solid players. I could see if you were a fan of the NHL in general that you would want to have uh, one of those uh, five jerseys out there. Um, And again, it's just a big thing for me because, you know, you take a look at Ovi and it wasn't the biggest jersey sale per market. It was the, the biggest jersey sale amount in all of the NHL. So just a really great thing uh, for the Capitals. And it shows that Ovi's name still uh, is effervescent uh, throughout the NHL. Wyshynski noted that Ovi has now ranked first in Jersey sales two years in a row. The Cap star was aided this season by not only the Caps releasing two new Jersey styles, but also his own ascent up the all-time goal scoring list. And of course, I do agree with that. I do like 
the direction the Capitals are going in with the alternate jerseys and that kind of thing, it gives kind of a fresh look because one of the things that I've heard quite a bit out there is the the standard, the jersey that you see over my shoulder there, that red one that has the white lettering that says Capitals on the front is a bit dated. The rock, the red thing is starting to be a bit dated. Uh, so that is why you are starting to see different jerseys worn at home, primarily kind of the navy blue uh, one that had the W on the front. You saw uh, the black one the alternate jersey that I wasn't able to get a hold of because they sold out that fast. Um, but I do think that that ultimately all factors in. And good thing on, on the NHL, good thing for the Caps for keeping the looks fresh. I know that there's tried and true jerseys out there. If you look at the Blackhawks jersey, um, you know, there's just a, you know, a handful of other jerseys out there. The Red Wings come to mind. Just these kind of historic uh, jerseys that have really stood the test of time. I don't think you need to change a Red Wings jersey. I think that that speaks well. There's just other ones in there as well that I've always thought looked uh, nice, just from an aesthetic point of view. The Calgary Flames is a nice looking one. That kind of thing. So um, just good for the Capitals for kind of changing with the times a little bit and kind of keeping a fresh look on it. I don't think they should ever, and I don't think they will abandon the rock, the red, the red jersey, and then the white for some time. Um, if they did do it, I wouldn't be against it. I'm all about a fresh look. Uh, but I do like the red jersey on occasion. But I did find it interesting that they were wearing that kind of navy blue one with uh, uh, the W on the front of it more and more uh, throughout the season. Some people said it was a bad luck charm every time they wore that jersey. I don't know if that's the case. Uh, but in particular, I like the alternate one that they they released, kind of the retro, reverse retro, I think they called it. Uh, I thought that was really a nice looking jersey. Um, and, you know, just kind of a, a cool thing to talk about. In his 18th NHL season, Ovi scored 42 goals, giving him 822 for his career. That moved him into second place on the all-time goals list, just 72 behind Wayne Gretzky's record of 894. In career with the Pens, he finished the 22-23 campaign with 93 points, which was since 18 so he is aging you know like the fine wine sometimes you see a dip in production but Crosby and Ovi are two players in particular that kind of show that you can defy age uh, as long as you take care of yourself and work hard in the offseason Ovi and Crosby to each other for their entire career as they were the number one overall draft picks in back-to-back -back years and both entered the NHL in 2005, both have enjoyed a great deal of individual and team success, making them two of the all-time greats. Ovi is a one-time Stanley Cup champion, plus he has won the Hart Trophy three times, the Rocket Richard Trophy nine times, and the Art Ross and Conn Smythe trophies each one time. Crosby is a three-time Stanley Cup winner, and he has won the Art Ross, the Rocket Richard, and the Conn Smythe trophies each two times. So a, a tip of the hat, you know, to, for both Crosby and Ovi. And, you know, when you watch games and you see kind of the bad blood between them, you would think that they hate each other. But as it turns out, they're actually quite friendly with each other. You know, when they are they don't have their jersey on and their skates on and they're playing a hockey game, there's a mutual uh, respect there. And I do respect uh, Ovi, of course, and I do respect Crosby for who he is as a player sometimes it supersedes the rivalry sometimes it supersedes all that i'm just respecting him on face value can be a bit of a jerk sometimes um but i think that holds true for a lot of different players there might even be a couple jerks on the capitals but we won't say anything there all right to the break here we will talk about ethan frank and how he could be poised to help this capitals team sooner than later we'll talk about him coming up So one of the things that can bother you is how you want, can tr go out and try to find tickets for those hard to find events. You know, I want a ticket to this concert. I want a ticket to this sporting event. And then you go, they're sold out. That is why you need game time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near, near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and getting hyped over the fun that you will have. And that is why I love using Game Time. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Supply again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices 
guaranteed. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure and follow or subscribe wherever you find your podcasts. I have a lot of great guests lined up this summer. As you know, I had Mike Vogel on for part one of the uh, his interview. Part two will be on a little bit later this week. I will also have John Walton on the show. And on Friday's show, I will have the new beat writer, for Washington Hockey Now. So make sure and subscribe to Locked On Capitals wherever you find your podcasts and on YouTube. So Ethan Frank is a guy that kind of came out of nowhere. You know, he's a guy that uh, just excelled right away. You put him in the AHL and he shot to the roof. And uh, that is what we're liking about him. Last April, forward Ethan Frank, then a fifth-year player at Western Michigan signed contract with Washington's AHL affiliate Bears and in his first season post-college Frank went from an undrafted free agent to one of the AHL's best goal scorers this is something to get hyped about Caps fans this is a guy that could come in in a hurry what do we hear all the time this team needs to get younger it needs to get faster there is a lot of talent to Bruin down in Hershey and Ethan Frank should be on the front of your list Frank finished the 22-23 AHL regular season with a team high 30 goals and 19 assists a campaign that caught the eyes of the Caps organization's Frank play. Frank's play impressed Washington enough to sign him to a one-year two-way contract. Let's let all that soak in. You know, there's some people that say he can't play in the Capitals right now. A one-year two-way contract for the 23-24 season this past March. A deal that will give the 25-year-old a chance to compete in training camp for a spot on the Caps roster. Yes, he could be playing on the Caps Sooner than later. Am I hyped about it? You better believe it. We always hear that this team needs to get young. It needs to get fast. And they have players like this that are ready for their big break. You got McMichael. You got uh, LaPierre. You have Frank. You have, you know, Shepard in, in goal down there. There is a lot of players that are on the cusp of really great things. And they play right here within the Capitals organization. Frank's path is hardly the norm, but it's a journey he told NBC Sports Washington he would not trade for anything. It's been a lot of work, a lot of time over the years, a lot of unseen work, and a lot of fun, Frank said. I haven't traded for anything. It's been a blast on my journey meeting all the people I have been able to, to make and make friends on different teams. I've been able to be a part of, and it's been a lot of fun. When Frank arrived at Bears training camp last fall, his coaches didn't know exactly what to expect from him. It didn't take long for Frank to make an impression early on. We're talking, just watching him at the start of training camp, and he was flying. Head coach Todd Nelson recalled, somebody made a comment, this guy can probably score 30 goals in the American League. We're just like that from the old guys. He did that comparison uh, speaking that uh, generally speaking, there is a bit of a leg there when you, you know, first uh, enter into professional hockey, not the key, the case for Ethan Frank as he has impressed right out of the gate. Despite never playing in the AHL before this season, the preseason prediction that he tallied 30 goals came true. In fact, Frank's goal scoring ability even surprised himself to some degree. I set a pretty high standard for myself, probably higher than some players do, Frank said. I'm trying to push myself every day to get better and to find different ways to help the team succeed. Luckily enough, that's scoring goal, so it's been a lot of fun, and I've had fun doing it. I definitely did probably surprise myself a little bit, but now I just showed myself what I can do, and I intend to improve on that year after year, writes NBC Sports Washington. So uh, I am really hyped for Frank. I know that he's a fast skater. I know that he has a good goal scoring touch. What is not to love about him? I want to have a good name for my parents and to show them that they raised a kid the right way and have a good hard work ethic, he said. A lot of emotion goes into uh, to that for me personally. And you know, what is it? These kids young nowadays are just so well-rounded and humble. Um, it's kind of, it's refreshing to me to a certain extent. 
oftentimes players of old, you saw kind of this uh, over the top attitude, like they thought they were the next greatest thing. Ethan Frank is a guy that eats a steady diet of humble pie. And uh, we like what he has in his game. When uh, Dylan McElrath had to say about him, I know it's his first year pro, but he comes to the rink every day. He pre prepares like a pro. And you obviously see it on the ice. I feel like he had a really consistent season. Even when he wasn't scoring goals, he was getting a lot of chances. Shots on net. That's what it's all about. Good things happen to those who shoot on the net. Obviously, pleasantly surprised with the season. And hopefully we can make him have even more goals in the playoffs. So it is exciting. The possibility of Ethan Frank and what he means to this Capitals organization. Is he going to be on the Caps next season on the big team in D.C.? I guess a lot of that remains up to him and how he continues to impress. Uh, will he continue to impress through the Calder Cup? And then also, what kind of camp will he have? Hey, look at Alexi Protus. Last season, I don't think he thought he was going to be playing all season, but he came in on a mission to impress. And subsequently, last season, Alexi Protus uh, had a spot on the Capitals. A little bit of a bumpy ride, but suffice it to say, I don't think last season it was in the cards for him to be on the big team. But you can impress in a hurry. That's what gets gets me hyped about Ethan Frank. That's what gets me hyped about Ivan Mirishnyshenko. Is that we might see this youth infusion a lot sooner than anyone thought. All right. So after the break here, we will talk about the Capitals as they continue to make some really solid signings and re-signings as they sign Michael Scarbolson. What does that mean for the Capitals? I'll talk about that when Locked On Capitals continues. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. So the Capitals continue to make some really solid signings and re-signings, if you will. In this case, Michael Scarbosa, who has been a steady Eddie down in Hershey for quite some time. The forward signs a two-year, two-way contract. What does that mean? He gets a different rate of pay uh, that he uh, will make in NHL and a different rate that he will make down in Hershey, depending on where he plays. Knee-jerk reaction right now, I see Scarbosa playing down in Hershey next season. He is a solid guy that has played there for quite some time. He has seen glimpses of, of greatness, and also he has seen some time up on the big team up in Washington, but uh, it is signing as he has been a steady force down in Hershey and uh, just a really great signing for the Capitals or re-signing. The Caps have re-signed Michael Scarbosa your two-way contract, 775000 on the big team, 525000 down in Hershey. Senior Vice President GM Brian McClellan announced Scarbosa 30 recorded 58 points, 21 goals, 7 assists and 60 regular season games with the Bears of the American Hockey League. The six foot, 187 pound forward led Hershey in assists, points, and power play assists. In addition, Scarbosa ranked tied for first on the team in game winning goals five, uh, second in power play points 18, tied for second in plus minus plus 19, and third in goals. Scarbosa's 58 points marked his highest single season in total since the 1819 season his first season with the bears while his 37 assists marked a career high in 218 games with hershey scarbosa has recorded 194 points 79 goals 115 assists is scarbosa a guy that's got a lot of talent in the tank you better believe it so when i said off the top of this segment i see him being overplaying on the big team he's 30 years old um, I'm not saying it's going to be impossible for him to play on the big team as we've seen him play up here before, but Scarbosa is kind of one of the veterans. I think that a lot of the younger guys look up to when you take a look at McMichael and LaPierre and just the Vin Vinny IR, all the younger players are down there. You need some veteran presence to kind of show them the ropes, if you will. And I think that Scarbosa fits that bill. Scarbosa tallied three points, one goal, two assists in Hershey's four game Atlantic division semifinal series against the checkers. The Ontario native has appeared in 17 games with the Caps since 1920, recorded six points, two goals, four assists in 65 career NHL games with the Caps, Florida Panthers, Anaheim Ducks, and Colorado Avalanche. Scarboza has recorded 16 points, four goals, 12 assists. Scarboza has recorded three and 93 points, 151 goals, 242 assists in five 
in 30 career AHL games with the Bears, Moose, Gulls, Thunderbirds, and Monsters, and the Norfolk, Norfolk Admiral. So this guy is a veteran, a bit of a journeyman, uh, but I like his game and his stats speak for themselves. Sometimes, you know, you might have different opinions on people, but then just flip over your hockey card and go, huh, pretty solid player. He's played on a lot of different teams and he has excelled at most every team that he's played on and been an integral role, an integral player for the Capitals, the Hershey Bears, that is, um, and their push for the Calder Cup playoffs. I'm excited about you know, Scarbosa and what he brings for the team as well. Um, we know that he's available for a call-up if needed, but I like what he has just as that veteran being like a mentor for a lot of the younger players that are playing down in Hershey. So a solid deal. And you got to think that Brian McClellan has plans, at least to a certain extent, uh, based on the fact, I think that he's a veteran and his stats are, are pretty good, that they gave him that two-way deal. So if he plays up in D.C., he makes a certain amount. And if he's playing over in Hershey, he makes another amount. So they do have a plan at least in place for him to play up on the big team if called upon. And like I say, taking a look at the back of his hockey card, he looks like he is one heck of a player. And I'm happy the Capitals have him within the organization. All right. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals. And listen, I love talking to you guys on this podcast, whether it's on the audio side or on YouTube. I would love to talk to you outside of this podcast. Come and join me on um, subtext. Subtext, if you're watching on YouTube right now, the information is scrolling across the bottom of the screen. If you're listening on the audio side, first of all, thank you. Uh, sometimes, you know, it goes on some audio uh, people that listen on the podcast side, but thank you for listening. I will have information on how to join me on subtext in the show description. So everyone come join me on subtext so we can talk Caps Hockey all summer long. All right. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it is your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.